There are so many things you can do in Zoho Analytics, but you first have to bring in the correct data. Now, in this video, I wanna show you kind of an overview on how you can do that and a few steps to follow. So you can see that I'm in my Zoho Analytics account and it's asking me to select my workspace. So I'm gonna hit the company data. And now it opens up to my Explorer tab. Now, if you already have things built in here like I do, then it's gonna open up to the Explorer tab. However, if you've never added anything into Zoho Analytics, it's going to push you right into the data sources page. So wait there while I catch up with you. So I'm gonna come over here and I don't see it on my left side bar here. So I'm gonna hit more and data sources. And now you can see it opens me up to this data sources management page. And you can see data sources and pipelines and later on I'll make a video on in depth going into pipelines. But for now, you can see that I have all these different data sources already connected. Um, before we jump into adding a data source, like over here, I wanna go through real quick how you can see what's going on with your current data sources. So you can see these are the data source names that you brought in. So I've got a lot of Google Drives, um, and it's actually all just the same Google Drive, just many different Google Sheets from there. You can then see the table name. So the difference between these two is that this is the name of your sheet in Google Drive, for example, or or the name of whatever source you're connecting, and then you can rename it to be to have a different table name, um, so it's easier to view in Analytics for you. But you you can see I've kind of kept it pretty generic and just prices as prices, build hours as build hours, and so on. So the most important things here to me are this last data import sync success, and then this next schedule time. So this one right here, you can see all of mine say sync successful, and if they're not successful, they'll say sync failed. Now that's an important thing to watch because it will, if you have it set up to pull your data in and grab a new copy of it every so often, you'll wanna watch these in case they fail. If they fail, you wanna quickly fix them so that you don't have anybody getting incorrect information. And for me, this is the place I go to look. Just a quick overview, you can scroll down through all of them really quickly and see everything that's going on. Now this next schedule time is also important because you can, you'll be able to tell when it's going to next pull your information into Zoho Analytics. And it does that by going in to your data source, grabbing the newest copy of the information and bringing it back in and replacing what was already there. So you can see, Right now, I have not applicable on most of these, um, except for this one. So these not applicables means I have not set up any automated polling of the data from any of these Google Sheets, except for this marketing spend one here. You can see the next schedule time is October 7th at 4 p.m., looks like. Um, and so I've just scheduled it I think every few hours for it to pull. This is nice because when someone comes to you and says, how often does my data update or when's it gonna pull next, is just quick and easy right there. Now, you can see over here, sync and refresh. Um, mine doesn't have anything, but on a lot of different data sources, you'll have a sync button. And instead of going anywhere else to refetch or repull your data instantly, it'll just be right here on this page and it makes it super nice. All right, so that's the overview for how to manage your pipelines. Um, <clears throat> actually, you know what? One more thing I wanna show you before we move on. If I click into one of these, you'll see this very specific data source. Um, we're doing, we're bringing it in from company data. You can see I'm working on the prices one. You can see it's a Google Sheet, the last sync status. Um, it's not scheduled when it's, if it was scheduled, it would have a time here. Um, you can come in here to edit setup and edit anything about this data source. And it makes it really nice because you can see the sheet name that it's using. You can see how you want it to import. Um, one important thing here is to be careful which one you select here. I almost always use delete existing records and add because it will delete my source and then bring in the brand new copy and replace it. Um, if you if you select this add records at end, all it's gonna do is go grab your new data and add it to the bottom. So 
a lot of times if you don't watch this, it's just going to duplicate your data over and over and over again, and you'll wonder why you have this huge, massive data source when you really don't mean to. Um, there's a couple other options that can be good in some circumstances, but for the most part, I recommend just sticking to delete existing records and add. Now, um, you can select this little box. If you are often adding uh, columns to, uh, for example, um, Google Sheets or Excel spreadsheets or CSVs, and you want to automatically pull them in, you can go ahead and select that. I didn't have it because I'm not doing that right now, but it's a great option if you don't want to constantly manage it. Now, if I do want to set up the schedule, I'm going to go ahead and go here to this repeat section, and you can see it's not scheduled currently. If I click this, you can see how often you can schedule it. Now, most of the time, stakeholders want you to do it as quickly as possible, so most of the time I go every n hours and do it as fast as it will let me. Depending on what version you're using, um, you can go up to every hour. You can pull the new data in. Um, sometimes it only lets you do up to three hours. However, you can, you know, you can do it as often as you want. It makes it really nice. The last thing on this little page is notify me after every however many import failures. Now, if you have an import failure, that means the new data is not getting into your data source, which means whoever's using whatever you're building in analytics is not getting correct information, right? Or updated, at least, information. Um, so if you want an email sent to you, or if you want some kind of an alert, you need to make sure that one of these is selected. So if I never want to hear about it, I don't really care about the data source. If it fails or not, I'd hit never, which I never do that. Um, I always want I always want it to do it pull, re poll at least two or three times to see if it can correct its own error. Um, but if not, after two or three times, I do want uh, I want an email to let me know that I need to go fix it or figure out what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save there. A few other things you can see is that you can do refetch now, which instantly pulls your data in and updates it. You can see the audit history, which is kind of nice. You can see what all of your users have been doing, when they've done it, um, in case you need to troubleshoot at any time, and then sync history. Now this right here brings up this little calendar, and since I have not had mine scheduled, there's not gonna be anything on here. However, if you have it scheduled, you'll have green and red days on here. Red means the sync failed, green means it's been good. So if you see a lot of reds in here, that means there's probably something going on with your data source, uh, maybe, Somebody's messing around with a Google Sheet and it's messing up the columns and that's why it keeps failing uh, or, or a million other reasons it might fail. But this is, a good, this is a good place to come see how often it's failing and what ones you need to focus on fixing. Okay, so that's a good overview for your individual management of data sources. If you want to add new data sources, it makes it pretty easy. Just come over here and click Add Data Sources. Now, at least in this video, since it's an overview, I'm not going to go into details on how you can add a specific one. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you kind of how you can find them. So on this left-hand side here, you can see all the different categories. So if you're just looking for Zoho apps, you can click Zoho apps and it brings up everything that has already been built for you to integrate. Now, if I want ERP systems, there's our ERP systems. And one thing I do notice here is something like SAP is not on here. If you want to request them to build an integration, you can click here, um, can't find your data source. I really wouldn't rely on them building it or building it very quickly at all, but that option's there. Now, um, I generally like to just search them here in the search bar. If I want Zoho Desk, I'll just click Zoho Desk and there we go, it's right there. That makes it easier for me. Um, but you can see <clears throat> right here that my most used apps are kind of here at the top. So I use a lot of these CSV files, JSON, um, Excel files. I use a lot of uh, cloud storage. So Google Drive for me is the big one, but there's Dropbox and all sorts of other stuff. And then databases and data lakes. So I connect to a lot of different databases. Um, also to get information into Zoho Analytics. You can see though, if I scroll down, there are 
a ton of different things that are already built for you to connect and it makes it really easy because all you have to do is plug in your credentials and you are good to go. All right, in future videos, I'm gonna show you how to um, integrate and put in your credentials and step-by-step -step do everything on how to set up many of these different apps or integrations that are already here. So make sure you look for those and I will see you in the next one.